Howdy, howdy, y'all. Welcome to Coffee and Tequila. This is a Saturday episode of Coffee and Tequila today. By the time it goes out, it could be a brunch episode. It could be an early supper episode. Coffee and Tequila. Um, I don't know. It'll just go out sometime today. Uh, my, my my name is Zachary Patton Garcia. My co-host, Alistair Patton Garcia, my lovely husband, is currently doing some training exercises in the field, some military stuffs, and so he should be back later today. And if uh, if he is, if he comes back early enough, um, and if he feels up to it, then he'll be back for the Monday morning show again. That's why we didn't have one this last Monday, but I guess I could just do them on my own. I don't know. It just feels weird, you know, and uh, I feel like people want to see us. <laughs> <laughs> want to see us together and so uh, I tend I try not to do episodes of my own because then I do get the comments of like we miss Alistair and I get it I do too okay but he'll be back today okay this episode of Coffee and Tequila is kindly being sponsored by Helix Sleep and we'll let you know a little bit more about him a little bit later um, but there's there's no real concept to this episode we're kind of just gonna have a chat I guess um, and chat, chat about nothing and everything all at the same time i have some things on the brain um i'm gonna vent a little bit later bitch we got all these things going on in the world but we gotta talk about my problems right uh, but that's what we're gonna do today <laughs> uh i don't know and I, I hope your saturday is going all right you know um how is your saturday how's your weekend going are you getting things done around the house that you wanted to get done? Are you running the errands you needed to get done? Are you are you going on those adventures you wanted to do? Um, did you go out last night and you're just fighting a hangover today? Are you just planning on having a relaxing weekend and binge watching Netflix and HBO Max? Binge watch The Last of Us. You should binge watch The Last of Us. It's real good, especially episode three. I feel like my audience here at Coffee and Tequila would enjoy episode three of The Last of Us. <laughs> um, yeah. So we we're just gonna we we're just gonna talk about it. nothing and everything at the same time. I did make a list of like talking points just in case I got off top topic just because that's what I do, right? I just get off topic, I talk in circles and <laughs> it's really terrible. This is why I need him here to balance me. I know a lot of people say I like cut him off all the time and um but he really does balance me and he like I, I would go in complete circles without Alistair being here. Um and I do cut him off and that's something I am working on. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't realize that I'm doing it. Um, my morning was great, though. I was, I've, been, I've had a nice morning. I got up early, went and worked out. I, I went to the post office. Uh, oh. <laughs> so I went to the post office this morning. I had to mail a pack, package out, right? And it wasn't super uh, busy, which is crazy because on Saturdays, the post office is open like half the day, right? And so it's usually really busy. Um, but it wasn't too busy. There was somebody in front of me, and then there was somebody behind me. Uh, and then, you know... The people working there and it looked like there was only one guy working the counters um but the so in our post office they still have the six feet apart stickers which i love by the way i love pandemic or not i love my personal space the six feet stickers really work for me i'm glad and and usually they're in a lot of places around here still but um People don't follow them, but in the post office, this specific post office, I noticed that people still follow that, and they will stand on the six feet stickers um, and give each other distance. And so uh, there is distance while I'm standing there between me and the other people. There's somebody at the counter, um, and I pulled up my phone because I needed to uh, check an address. I needed, I wanted to, I'm big worry, right? So I, I wanted to check the address on the box that I'd written down, make sure that's all good while I was standing there. So I pull up my phone, pull up uh, the internet, and and last night I'd been watching a little bit of porn, and so I was searching for a specific video, and so I had typed like Frat Men, Frat Pad Max, something like that, um, along those lines, and I was just looking for my specific video. I couldn't find it, by the way. Big bummer there, but um, if you know, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I pulled that, that internet tab up, and that Google search is still there. And again, people like the the lady behind me is on her six feet sticker, so she's a good bit behind me. So I wasn't worried that she saw it or anything. I didn't panic. Um, but I guess my phone froze up because when I went to I went into the search bar and I t- I tapped it um, to I was gonna just like erase that type whatever the new thing I needed to type was um, uh, and. <laughs> Like, my phone froze up, and so I'm, like, tapping and trying to get it to move, and I start tapping all the other buttons. And I guess at some point, I had, do you know, you know, 
this is an iPhone, by the way, guys. If you're an Android user, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Sorry. Update your life. Um, <laughs> but if you, yeah, so when you tap text, uh, some options come up like copy, paste. Uh, there is, and then there's another option that I didn't realize was even there. I knew that your phone could read things out for you. This is where we're going. I knew your phone could read things out for you, but I thought you had to go through like a whole like a little little process to do that, go into like settings and, and shit like that. But apparently there's a little little tab right next to copy and paste that says speak. And so as I'm tapping this and my phone's frozen up, I guess it like all caught up all at once. And at some point I had tapped speak. <laughs> <laughs> And my phone's on full volume, and so it, it reads out, Frat Man, Frat Pad, Max. Just out loud for everybody to hear, and it's very loud. The The post office was quiet enough that everybody did hear it. I, like, panicked, like, almost dropped my phone, was trying to, like, click out of the internet real fast. And, uh, again, like, the search bar wasn't that bad. Frat Man, Frat Pad, Rat Max, you know, it didn't, it didn't, not a whole lot of descriptions. It could have, it could have said, you know, destroys whole, uh, Cockbuster, you know, it could have said anything like that. So I'm lucky it said what it said. Um, but, but everybody did hear, and I looked around, and you know, nobody really gave me any sort of look or anything. And I figure, you know, nobody. There was a bunch of ladies in there, so I I don't suspect that they know frat men, frat pad max. Maybe they do, but nobody gave me any specific looks or anything like that. It was just. <laughs> I was embarrassed. Guys, guys, when you look up porn on your phone, make sure that you close out your tabs, okay? Close your tabs, close the apps. If you have apps on your phone, make sure it's all it's all done, okay? Make sure all that's done. Do you know do I know this happens to a bunch of people because it used to happen to me all the time, but like accidentally leaving your uh leaving your notifications on for grinder and then leaving your, your volume on and then it makes a little noise. <laughs> In public, you know, and then you know who the gays are at that point because you look around and those are the ones that, that are going to look up. Mm -hmm. It's a good strategy. But that was my morning. Um, I guess we can go to the Helix Sleep real quick. Yeah, so Alistair's gone. Uh, so I am sleeping alone. Helix Sleep is kindly sponsoring this episode of Coffee and Tequila. As with all of them, usually... Uh, the, the, we've been working with Helix for over two years now. It's going to be three in July. And so I've, I've almost had my Helix Midnight Lux, uh, queen size mattress for almost three years now. And it still holds up really, really well. And so when Alistair's gone, usually I end up in the guest room if I'm not in there already, just cause the bed's smaller. I don't really like sleeping in a bigger bed if like he's not here, um, and, and that bed is perfect. You know, both of them feel exactly the same. They're so comfortable. They help me fall asleep really, really fast. And, you know, when he's when he's here, it's so funny because when he's here um, and he's like snoring and all that, I need to, I'm like, I need to move into a different bed. I need to go, I need to sleep by myself. I cannot get sleep with you. Um, but then when he's not here and I don't have the option of sleeping with him, uh, it's real lonely and I miss him a lot. And I'm like, damn, shit. And so I take the Helix pillows and I'll like make them like a little body and I'll like cuddle up against it and have Brando there with this and it feels normal, kinda. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your unique needs. Everybody's different, right? Well, Helix has this sleep quiz that'll match you with the perfect mattress. And it was perfect for us because we could take the quiz as a couple. You know, Alistair is more of a side sleeper. I'm an all-over sleeper. Alistair likes a firm mattress. I like my mattress medium. We took the quiz and we were matched with the Midnight Mattress. Now, one great part to all this is that Helix will ship your mattress right to your door for free in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up, and we've done it twice. And if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, well, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial, so you get more than three months to make sure that you absolutely love it. And if you don't, they'll come and pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. Well, if you or somebody you know is in the market for a new mattress and you think that Helix sounds right for you, you can go to helixsleep.com slash tequila where you can get 20% off of your mattress and two free pillows. See, he ain't even here to say it. Mm. But he does come home later today, so that's great. That's fantastic. But it's things like this. So he has to do these training things pretty often, right? And so he, he'll go away for like a week, two weeks, however long he needs to go away for. Um, and lately... As he's done that, it's made me think about, it's like reminded me that he's probably going to deploy at some point before he gets out of the military again, right? Like that's, that's going to probably come up pretty soon. 
And so when he deploys, it's he's already deployed once before. He deployed back in like 2018, 2019, something like that. And he was gone for about nine, ten months. And it was real lonely, you know, like I missed my person. My person wasn't here. And I was like spiraling a little bit. And so I was like, I don't want to stay in Lawton, Oklahoma. I'm going to go back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is like way over there, right? Um, Lawton was about three hours from my family. Tuscaloosa was about 12 hours from my family, 13 hours. And so I like moved us out of that house, moved all our shit into storage and packed up my truck and moved to Tuscaloosa, Alabama because I figured I had friends there, right? So uh, everybody would be, everybody would be there. It'd be like old time, be hanging out. But no, you know, people grow up and they graduate college and they get jobs and start their own lives. And so I got there and, you know, everybody's got their own lives going on. You can't expect them to drop their life to hang out with you. And so... I like sat in the apartment a lot, you know, I would go out and kind of go do, walk on trails and, you know, do, I'd, I'd do all my stuff that I thought I was going to do with everybody, but I'd do them by myself. And it was just me and I was like 12 hours from everybody. And so I didn't see, I didn't really have anybody around me, right? Um, Trent was really good for that. He was a real good buddy about that. Um, and, uh, so my roundabout way of speaking, I don't know where I'm at. Yeah. So if he goes away again, this time. I am currently about six hours from my family this time, much shorter than 12 hours, and uh, uh, I'm going to stay here, my base is going to be here, I'm going to keep this house, I'm not going to spiral, I'm not going to get rid of all my stuff, or like put all my stuff in storage or anything like that, I'm staying put, however, I, I do figure I'll probably take a couple weeks sometimes, um, I'll, I'll probably go every, just I don't know, maybe three times I'll take like a week or two and go to New York City because I really want to start meeting with other creatives and really getting some stuff going and some stuff rolling. And so that's kind of the plan. I want to go out and spend a lot of time in New York City, but I don't want to move to New York City. I'm going to stay here. And then if I like feel lonely or something, I can just drive to my, my family's house and, you know, hopefully I'll have people here. The I think the people here are still going to stay around. I don't know. Everybody's going to pretty much deploy at the same time. So all the people I know. <laughs> All their spouses are going to be here, I think. Mm. Um, but, yes, like, r again, roundabouts way of saying, uh, this is, like, reminding me that that's going to probably come up soon. And I'm going. he's going to be gone for, like, a long time, not just a week or two. He's going to be gone for a long time, and it's going to be really rough, and he'll probably miss holidays and birthdays. And it's It's going to be terrible. I hate it. I hate, hate it, hate it, hate it, but this is the life, right? And, like, for me, I'm bitching about it, and I'm complaining about it, but for him, it's even worse because they go over there, and the last time he went over there, they were working for, like, 12-hour days, and they didn't get any days off. He didn't get any days off the entire time he was there. Um, and it just, I know he was miserable. He was a, you know, but it's the job he signed up for, and so he soldiered through it. Ha, <laughs> ha. Uh, he soldiered through it, and he, that's just his way, it's like, he just, like, pushes through things, you know, what's in front of him, he just does it, you know, doesn't really complain, um, and I get to be the person he complains to, which is great, but, you know, generally, he doesn't, he's not a complainer, um, and so I know that's gonna be really rough for, on him as well, I'm just not looking forward to it, but guess we better start preparing for it, at least, um, but he'll come home today. <laughs> we plan on watching a cocaine bear. I really want to go see cocaine bear. And so he's going to, he's been starving in the field. I know he's been real hungry. And so, um, he's going to come back. We're going to go see cocaine bear and we're going to at the Alamo draft house. And we're going to see, uh, uh, we're going to get pizza and like food. Maybe he'll get a burger or something. He usually gets a burger and I do the pizza. Um, and so we're real excited about that. Uh, Cocaine Bear just looks like the stupidest fucking movie that is just going to be like the best time. You know, it's not going to be deeper than it needs to be. It's going to know exactly what it is, and I have a lot of faith in it. And a lot of people are talking, saying real nice things about it. So i um, hoping it lives up to the uh, very low bar expectation that I have for it. Um, and then we have a bunch of TV that we need to catch up on. Uh, uh, he's gotten really into the show Traitors. He's like real big into that one, and so we're going to finish up that one. Um, also, The Last of Us, we have not seen past episode three. Episode three really got us, and so we had to like step back from it because every episode till then was like pretty sad. I'm like, I can't be sad every episode of this show. I need to laugh. I need to enjoy things. And so, but we're going to catch up on that. And then, oh, 
Netflix recently, I can't wait to tell him about this. I start saving all these like little tabs to like show him when he gets back. Um, but Netflix, I don't even think he knows much about it, but Netflix is doing a, like a documentary series, a docu something on uh, MH, is it 370? Fly MH 370, that that Malaysian Airlines flight that went missing in like 2014. Um, it was like a Boeing 777. And they're doing like a docuseries on this. And this is one of like the biggest aviation mysteries in recent time. And it's a real big deal. And it's had a chokehold on me ever since it happened. And it's just like, it'll drive you crazy thinking about it and thinking about all the theories and conspiracies and everything. A lot of people think that the pilot um, crashed that plane or that it just went down in the ocean or... Uh, there was a fire on board and everybody passed out, something. I don't know. It's just wild that that plane has never been found. It's it's insane. Have you guys seen the... There's, there was a show a while back that came out called um, The Manifest. I don't know how long that show lasted. I only watched the first episode. Um, but there was a show called The Manifest, and it was about a plane that goes missing. It's carrying all these passengers, and then it comes... Uh, and then it lands at the airport, and... It had been like five years or something, and the plane had been missing for that long, and all the passengers looked the exact same, and everybody's like, oh my gosh, you guys disappeared five years ago. And the passengers are like, oh, we're here. Um, what if what if that happens? I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> I do need to stop watching like plane stuff, though, because we've been flying a lot lately, and uh, that's really sucking me out, because there's this YouTube channel... It's real good. He makes his videos are phenomenal, um, and so I, I'm gonna probably link his channel down below. Go check it out, absolutely. Especially if you're not flying a bunch, if you don't really have a fear of flying, absolutely check his videos out. But he um, he does a lot of videos on aviation disasters and aviation mistakes and, and things like that. They're not all you know fatalities, um, but his videos are crafted really well in that he'll he will do like flight simulations and we'll get to see like from the pilot's perspective and things you buttons you need to push i tell you his channel has convinced me that if a plane's going down i can save us if the engines stall if we start nose diving and we need to get back up i got this i, I watch the mentor pilot youtube channel just call me call me out of my seat <laughs> please don't i hope that never happens um but those videos have started to suck me out because when i go on planes now that's all i'm thinking about is like oh I know every way that this plane can go down, and, and this could be a disaster. It really sucks me out, right? And I have to, I get a lot of anxiety, and I have to calm myself and tell myself, well, like, I do a couple of things, and then and then I'm good. Um, I have to calm myself, I have to tell myself, hey, if something were to happen, um, you have no control. There's nothing you can do. You have watched Mentor, by the way, you don't know how to fly this plane. You cannot do shit. It is out of your control. It is in God's hands, and you will. What will happen will happen. Two, if you, if the plane goes down, you go splat. This is real morbid, by the way. I'm sorry. Don't mean to scare nobody. The plane goes down. You're. I mean, you're gone in an instant. You're not gonna care. It's just gonna happen, right? Um, and three. Do you know how many planes are in the air every single day, every single hour? It's it's a lot. So. Uh, you know, while we're up there and we feel fear, it kind of, it tends to feel like we are the only people experiencing this at the moment. However, there are so many other planes with so many other passengers doing the exact same thing you were doing at that moment and throughout the day that have taken that exact same route and you're, you're fine. You're completely fine. And so when I think of those three things, I'm like, okay, can calm down, but, um, <laughs> Like leading up to any flight that I know I have coming up, I like stop watching those videos and I like don't, don't read anything about planes or anything like that. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a little tangent, wouldn't it? Um, what else do I have here? I don't know. Uh, not much. We got some. We got some social issues and some political issues here that I kind of listed. I don't know why I listed them. I'm not going to talk about them today. You know, coffee and tequila, like, I really did start it out as, as um, a way to to talk about social issues and political issues. Um, but I feel like I haven't found the right balance of, like, how to do that. So 2020 was a really big year for me. Um, and it was really <laughs> centering myself. I'm about to tell you not to center yourself. But it really was a very formative year for me and an important year for me because it, it was uh, the first time that I'd really stepped outside of my bubble and, like, looked outside of my own bubble and considered 
other people's experiences and their 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 lives and what they go through that I will never have to experience, right? That really did a, a lot for me. Um, and I did get caught up in the whirlwind and jumped on the bandwagon of like posting all the time and like really going like full social justice warrior. Um, let me tell you, and I don't regret anything I said. I believe in everything that I said and I, I believe in all of the reform and I, I stand by everything. But what I, where I think I made the mistake was centering myself and I think I did it without even consciously realizing I was doing it um and centering myself and like preaching at people and using my like amplifying my voice higher than other people's voices that who should have been like you know I should have been lifting other people up right I shouldn't have been preaching I did not have the experiences and the uh the the I did not live that life or any of those lives, because there was a lot that happened in 2020, and I didn't have any of those experiences to be the one who should have been preaching at anybody, right? Or, like, lecturing anybody. And I think I made a real mistake there. And so I've, I've stepped that back, but when we came up with Coffee and Tequila, I wanted Coffee and Tequila to be the place where I could amplify other voices and and really talk about social issues and politics um, in a way that wasn't preachy. And that was just, I give my viewpoint... Um, and I, 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 you know, kind of move on, but I'm not like preaching at anybody, but I'm very, I'm very firmly letting y'all know like where I stand on these things. Right. Um, and we did that throughout season two. We did that through season one too, but we also did that throughout season two. And I think I still like couldn't find that balance. And I was having a really hard time finding that balance where it didn't sound preachy. It didn't sound like I wasn't like I was sent. I don't want to be centering myself. Right. Um, and it's a learning game. It's all just a learning thing. I'm learning how to do this um, because it is important for us to speak up and use our voices. Um, and especially if, if you have a platform, and I do have a very small platform, but I have a platform that I should take some stances, right? Um, and there's a lot going on right now in the country, you know, with politics and with social issues. And, and the, the conversation about trans people, is, trans women in particular, is very, very loud right now. Um, and it is something I need to be talking about and taking a stance on. And I, I think I need to find the right way to do that. Right. I've started like a notes app where I'm kind of like putting all my thoughts in and, um, and opinions together and, you know, kind of where I stand. Um, I'll read you the first one. I don't really want to go into it because this is not the way I want to frame it. Um, or I haven't worked out how I want to frame it yet. But, um, so my first point is it, it is not hard, nor does it affect me or my life to affirm someone's identity. Very basic stance there. Right. But I feel like, unfortunately, um, you can't just leave it there and we should be able to leave it there, but there are so many other facets that people are talking about that, you know, there's just so many things that need to be considered at the same time, um, that I, I should be talking about. Right. Um, I just have to find the right way to do that without centering myself. Um, you know, I don't know. And I want to, I want to do stuff like that. That's what I want this place to be is I want to primarily through telling stories, um, talk about other people's experiences. Um, you know, and it's kind of hard doing that with a blend of like pop culture. I want to do it through a lens of pop culture and through a lens of, uh, of celebrity and think I love that stuff. Right. And I think that I can do that. I just haven't figured out how. And so sometimes my show, our show, uh, feels like a little incohesive and I don't know, I'm working on it guys. I'm working on it, but it is always at the forefront of my mind. And it is something I am always actively working on, but okay. Um, the, uh, I guess we get to the bitching part. I just talked about not centering myself, but here we are. We're going to center me for a second. Um, I posted a video yesterday, and this has been fucking bugging me. I posted a video yesterday on my main channel. Let me see how much time I have. Oh, I'm going to cut, and I'm going to come right back. One second. So I posted a video yesterday on my main channel, and it was uh, me and Alistair looking into each other's eyes for four minutes. It was like an intimacy exercise that he'd like seen somewhere, and he'd been wanting to try it. And we almost did it a, a while ago, but we, we just didn't end up doing it. Um, and so we did it, and uh, I I did I got a comment that like really bugged me, right? And so I'm gonna bitch about that one. But like usually, usually I'm like really good. I like I take I'm, I'm really conscious about like if you see a negative comment, you read it, you move on, right? You just move on. It's not worth 
really giving it your time and energy. It truly is not. You've been doing this for like seven years. You, you know the gist of it. There are going to be comments. Um, and for the most part, and this is where I give y'all a big thank you. There, for the most part, all of the comments are so sweet and so kind. You give you, y'all y'all share such kind words, and you really have supported us all this time. Whether you've been here for a year or you've been here all seven years, you know, and we really appreciate that. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I don't appreciate it, and I I truly think of you guys in my day to day life. You know, um, y'all have made that much of an impact on my life. Um, but there's just something about the the occasional comment and it, I get comments on every video like negative comments on every video it's not overwhelming but I, I'll get a few and usually I'm able to move past it really move on but there's always every now and then there's that one comment that is just so loud that really bugs you right and you just can't move on you like can't get it out of your head and so I made the mistake yesterday I, there was one comment that really wasn't even that bad it was it, it was fine whatever I could have moved on I made the mistake of like of answering it. Um, and so the comment went, uh, vids only get made on this channel now when it is a contractual obligation to get it done for a sponsor, and it shows. Snooze. And like, whatever, you know, it's just, it's, that sh I, I should not have answered that. So I said, there's nothing wrong with getting a sponsor for these videos. Most of my videos run long with plenty of content. If you can only focus on sponsored content or on the sponsored moment, that sounds like a you problem. Okay. It's just like, I don't engage. Just don't engage. So this person answers back. Uh, and I haven't checked recently to see if he's answered back again. But he, uh, he answered back. I agree. Nothing is wrong with sponsorship, but now content only gets created on this channel when it's a must for a payday. A guy has to make a, a buck. I get it. Too bad the content is now two fat guys staring at each other while waiting for the check. The mojo is gone. A, it happens. You'll pivot and find creativity again and get the juices flowing eventually. Your fans will endure the fallow period, but you hear what I'm saying. You know. Sorry about the fat remark. That was needlessly mean. Still fucking put it in there, though, didn't he? Didn't erase it. Uh, spring is almost here. Good luck. And I just said, I'd, I'd rather you unsubscribed it if you haven't already. The mojo's gone, as you say. Don't watch anymore. And so I haven't read if he's responded to that or not. But, like, again, like, ugh, I kind of brought that on to myself. Because if I just ignored it, it just, it, it, I wouldn't have got the second comment. The second comment is what bothered me. And that's the one that's sticking with me right now. And as soon as I'm done talking about it, I'll, I'll be done with it. Um, but it, that's the one that got to me is because it's just, ah, the sponsored stuff doesn't really like hit me that hard because I, I truly don't see an issue with getting a sponsorship for a video. If I, if I have my videos, um, I don't put mid rolls through them. You know, I have, I have, um, a, a, an ad, like one of the YouTube ads at the start of it, sometimes at the end of it, but I don't put mid rolls through my videos. My videos are fairly long. They're usually 20 minutes at minimum. You know, the last fucking video I put out was 45 damn minutes with no mid rolls. I don't believe I put mid rolls. If I did, I didn't mean to because I try not to do that if there's a sponsor. And I really don't see an issue with adding a sponsor to any of my vlogs. I don't see an issue with it. Um, it's very easy to go past that part or to just like zone out during that part or whatever. Book ending a sponsorship, I always put in an ample amount of content that is not revolving around the sponsored part, right? There's plenty in there to kind of focus on. And now another part of that, uh, it, it, I've really pared down like who I work with. And so I try to work with like the same people. There's two companies that I primarily work with. And that one of those is Helix Sleep. And I've worked with Helix Sleep more than anybody else, right? I really enjoy working with Helix Sleep. And they know more than anybody that I have pushed so many deadlines because I have not felt creatively motivated to make a video or I'm not ready to put a video out at a specific time. I do not put out videos because I have a sponsorship coming out. I add those, and I'm really lucky that the companies I've worked with have gone along with me on this because it's really easy for, for people to drop you if, if you're like this. Um, and I don't want to get labeled difficult or anything like that, but like the companies I work with, they're, they're great. Helix is fantastic. And if I'm not feeling like this is the right video to put out, you know, um, and I can't put it out right now and I have a sponsorship coming up, I will push it. 
I will push it. And that's why this last year I went so much time between videos um, because I didn't feel like I was ready to put out a video. I wasn't really feeling putting it together. I, as I started putting it together, I wasn't feeling how it was coming out. And so I took time away. Um, I put out videos when I want to put out videos. And if I have a sponsorship, I usually, I will reach out to them and I will say, Hey, I'm not feeling it right now. Can we push it? And they're usually like, yes, we'll push it. Um, but I do not force myself to put out a video just because I have a sponsorship. That is the truth. Um, and there is nothing wrong with me adding tacking on a sponsor to these videos nothing um now the comment that really got me did you catch it it was uh <laughs> that i mean the last part clearly got me if i'm going on a rant about it but this is the part that really got me right too bad the content is now two fat guys staring at each other while waiting for the check okay i Again, I'm really good. It's every single video now. It turns out to be every single video I upload um, where I'll, I'll start getting fat comments, right? And I'm really good about just ignoring them and just going on, and it's just like whatever, okay? It is whatever. They just sometimes, sometimes they'll get to me. Now, when I post a video, I'll usually get like two or three of the fat comments or comments about my weight and Alistair's weight, and and he can talk to you about that himself for his, his own perspective. Um, it's just shitty. But it's nothing to get crazy over. Um, but I'll also get DMs with the same sorts of comments and and people. So if I I can't answer everybody in DMs, it's just too many people. Um, and sometimes when I don't answer somebody, they get really upset and they get butt hurt. And then I'll get more. I can see y'all's messages. I can see when you message me the first time, the second time, third time, and then when you get upset with me for not answering you, and you then resort to. Uh, the fat comments and the comments about the weight and you really got fat. Nobody even watches you anymore. You're fat now. You used to be so cute. You're not fat. It, it happens often. Um, and I try not to talk about it. I try not to, um, I just try not to talk about these things in, in my videos. I try not to, hold on. I've got my thoughts like listed out. I need to pull some of those up because Okay, I don't want to. I, I want to say things the right way. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'm reading through it. I'm not even sure I want to say it like this either. <laughs> I don't know. I try not to have looks or appearance be at the forefront of any of my videos. Um. It's very important for me not to do that. And on social media, I try not to post a bunch of thirst, thirst traps and stuff like that. Now, I have. I have done it plenty of times, right? Um, and I have made thumbnails that are really enticing and, like, you know, a little bit sexual and, and you know, push our bodies. And I've done those things. I'm not exempt from that. Um, and that whoever, whoever decides to do those things, there's nothing wrong with it, right? But the problem with me doing those things is it always invites people to start talking about looks and appearance. And I don't want anybody talking about my looks or appearance. And me talking about it right now is also inviting people to talk about my looks and appearance. So I get that. I fully get it. Um, but that's why I don't try to push looks at the forefront of my, my, my videos, right? Um, we all have our own insecurities. I have my own insecurities. I've talked about them a little bit Um here on Coffee and Tequila and over on my own channel, you know, um, but I don't need to like, I don't need to, you know, go over those over and over and over and over again. I just don't. And there's not, it also like, you know, there, I have people, so I also have people coming to my channel who also struggle with self image and their own insecurities. Right. And when they see comments like that, or they see me in a video talking about stuff like that and doing something like I am right now. Um, it might not make them feel good either. And that's just not a space that I want to, I don't want to make a space like that. You know, um, I really regret, there's one video I really regret. I'm not going to delete it because it's there and I don't want to, I do like the video, but there's one video I, I made, um, 2021 where I'd, I'd like dropped down to like under 180 and I was real happy about that. Um, and I did it the right way. You know, I was eating right. I was eating really well actually. And I was, I was working out right. And, um, it, and I regret like talking about my weight like that. I regret, I regret, um, because who, who watching that, who has their own insecurity wants to see me talking about that. They don't, 
They just, you know, that might make them feel worse. And it's, it's, it's something I do regret. I regret that video. Um, but yeah, see, I'm, I'm lost again. <laughs> Uh, I think that a lot of people will come to comments or come to my messages and, and it is a fair amount of people. Listen, it is a fair amount of people. It's not a lot of people, but their voices are pretty loud when I see them. But I think they expect me or they mention like they always come with, oh, you don't look like you did when I first started watching you. At 21 years old, I don't look like I did at 21 years old. I'm not going to look like that again. Um, and if you want to know the truth, I started gaining weight. I haven't looked like that since probably 2017. So it really baffles me when people compare me to how I did when I first started YouTube. And I was on, I only looked like that a very small amount of time. Back then, I was a college kid, poor college kid. I, I very clearly had... I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I had eating disorders. I, I played into disordered eating. I was over-exercising. I was starving myself. I would only eat like gummy worms and Dr. Pepper. And then if I ended up eating like cheesy bread for um, fucking Domino's, um, I would purge it, you know? And then I would go over-exercise and make sure I was like really skinny. Um, and then when I left college, I stopped doing that. I started eating more about what I wanted to eat. And now I like struggle with, you know, emotional binge eating but that's its own separate thing and i'm like I'm, I'm pretty good at like staving that off if i need to um but i stopped doing that i stopped starving myself and then i you know i stopped working out as much because it wasn't making me happy and i started gaining weight and that's just fine there's nothing wrong with that and that was 2017 so i started gaining weight in like 2017 and people are still like acting hugely surprised when they see me and I have some love handles and I have a belly and like I am heftier, you know? Um, and I just, I don't, I, it, 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 some, it does bother me. I can't say it doesn't bother me. And I, I, I hate that I'm talking about it so much right now because it's giving it so much firepower. And it, again, I could be making somebody else who has self image issues, uh, really, uh, feel bad. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm again, I'm venting. <laughs> That's all that this is. I'm venting. Um, just bitching. Uh, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. You know, people who come on to the internet just to tear other people down, right? And there's a lot of people who do that. Well, those people are not to be reasoned with. You cannot reason with people like that just because that is their sole purpose for being on the internet, usually. I was talking to my buddy Ian about this the other day, and people who go on the internet just to spew negativity and hate and uh, bigotry and whatever, that is why they're on the internet. That is that That is why they're on the internet. That's why they've created whatever social media account. They want to go in and say those things. You are not going to convince them of anything. And so I shouldn't respond to people like this because that is what they want to be there saying. That is what they want to say. Um, and you convincing them of anything, it's just showing them that it's bothering you, right? Um, and it's, uh, it's it's just a bunch of bullshit. Um, I don't know. I am my body. <laughs> I have my own insecurities. I, 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 that's just a given. But I have to say, when I look in the mirror... I am okay with what I see, you know? I have enough money that if I wanted to go get liposuction or whatever the hell, if it was really bothering me that bad, I could go do it. I'm okay with what I see in the mirror, you know? I think me at my size is fine. I, I right now, am like really balanced with eating what I want in healthy portion sizes and and working out, you know? in a healthy way and not over exercising or doing it when I don't want to. I like, I, I, I enjoy working out now. Do you know, I lift more than I ever have. I'm stronger than I ever have been. Um, and it's been like that, a steady incline from with that since I started YouTube, you know, um, I, I, I'm okay with myself, but then when I see these fucking comments, that is when I'll start like doubting that. 
sort of confidence that I feel, you know, that is when I'll start doubting. Oh, mm, well, that makes me feel bad. That kind of hurts. That kind of stings a little bit, you know. Um, and I just need to, I need to keep it moving. I don't need to be doing videos like this, but we're just having a chat today. So I'm doing it. Um, uh, who fucking cares, man? Who fucking cares? I look okay. I am okay with how I look. Uh, I just need to get better at ignoring comments that say otherwise that can like it make me double think that. You know, um, <laughs> let's go through my notes and see if uh, I got anything to say. But I made a whole little, little notes app thing. I was like, mm, I'm going to go off. I'm just going to go off on it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of all I got on that one. But uh thank you guys for listening to me ranting about <laughs> that fucking comment. I'm not doing a video like this again. I can't do a video like this again. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. I it's 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 I am giving way too much attention and time to this. But I'm putting it's a brunch episode. We're just talking. We're just talking. I'm bitching about it. Um I don't know. I'm very excited for Alistair to come back home. What time is it right now? It's like eleven thirty, so it might not be brunchy whenever we upload this one but um i also am recording with ann carlos crawford of slayer best 98 for the episode of passion of buffy the vampire slayer season two today so i'm really excited about that one i need to go watch that one again um and i've got a good life y'all i've got a good life i've got a lot to be fucking thankful for i'm really happy you know I, I have my ups and downs like everybody else does, and I think I, I tend to focus those more into videos because, because I don't know, I don't really like feel super inspired to make videos when I'm happy all the time, right? But when I feel bad, putting it into a video is very much like a journal. It's like journaling, right? And so I, 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 I get it out. I purge it. I purge those feelings, and I'm, I'm able to like move on a little bit. Um, but for the most part, I'm happy. You know, I love my husband. Um, we've been opening up to each other more lately than we have in a real long time. And that's been real nice. And I really miss him right now. Um, I, I love Brando. You know, I really miss Winnie. But I got I got a few years with her. I didn't get nearly enough time with Winnie. We're, we can't even go into that one. Talk about being happy. Um... I've got coffee and tequila, which I'm really fucking proud of. I've got all of you. I That is where I'm so damn lucky is that I've got so many people who support us. And we're just such kind people. Like, I read some of y'all's messages sometimes, and I'm terrible at responding. And I, I really am going to get better with that. Um, but I just I read some of y'all's comments sometimes, and it's, it just makes me so full of joy. And I can really tell that some of y'all are some real good people. You know, and I'm really grateful that I have attracted so many really good people and kind hearted people. You know, I'm thankful for that. I'm so grateful. And I thank you guys all so much for that. Um, and on Monday, me and Alistair are going to be back and we're going to talk about pop culture and hot topics and all that. And if you want to hear us talk about anything specific, you let us know and I will, I will try to do that. Um, yeah, I think. <laughs> I, that's really all I have. Thank you guys so much for being here with me and talking with me. And I love you guys so much. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>